How do you make your product or service stand out in a red ocean? Oh, what's a red ocean? Ooh, what's a blue ocean? We're going to talk about it on today's episode. Listen, there's a lot to learn when growing and scaling your business. That's why we created the Business Choreography Podcast, where we talk about choreographing your marketing, operations, and sales into dynamic systems that increase your revenue and your impact. We'll explore solid business principles and discuss all things that make businesses dance to success with clarity. We'll help you figure out where the holes are in your business and what you can do to fix them. Think of us as your official business choreographers, aka your insider growth strategists. Remember, your choreography matters. Welcome to the Business Choreography Podcast. Welcome back to another episode of Business Choreography. And I am excited that you're here today because I'm going to talk about something that I love. Anytime I see cool things going on in the world around me, I love to be able to get a hold of them and share them with you because for you guys running businesses, uh, you know, it's just a... Uh, what is it? The uh, the fire swamp in The Princess Bride, right? There's all sorts of crazy things that come up along the way that you have to learn and that you have to figure out how to navigate through. And so when I see things that are being done that are really cool by a business, I always try to take note of them and bring them back to share with you. And this is no exception. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about how to make your product or service stand out in a red ocean. So first of all, let's talk about a red ocean. If you haven't heard of this concept, red ocean, blue ocean, it was made popular a couple years ago, maybe, maybe even longer. And the concept is simple. A red ocean is where the sharks are already eating. The waters are bloody. There's tons of uh, opportunity to eat. And so the sharks show up and now it's a feeding frenzy. And so they call it a red ocean. In business, a red ocean is quite simply a place where you know there's customers. You know there is a place to actually succeed at what you're doing. Now, you notice I tainted that a little bit. Speaking of uh, red ocean, I tainted it a little bit more in the positive light. In a moment of maybe interesting thought, it was thought that, hey, a red ocean maybe isn't such a great thing. Well, why? Because, you know, there's tons of competitors, there's tons of people, there are already people selling the thing that you're selling, and maybe it's not a great place to do business. And so it was thought, hey, you should probably go find a blue ocean to sell your services or to figure out what could be sold in that blue ocean, meaning there were no sharks, there weren't, there wasn't uh, an overabundance of people selling the uh, item, product, service, whatever it is that you're selling. Now, there are a couple ways to look at it. On one end, if you're starting a new business and you cannot see very clearly that people want your product and that people are already buying your product, then you become a pioneer. And what happened to the pioneers? As uh, Russell Brunson likes to say, they were getting shot. They had arrows in the back from their exploits at exploring new areas, right? Arrows in the back. The pioneers were leading the way and they were taking the brunt of the exploration, right? But then, but then as those roots got taken care of and it was easier to move out west, what happened? Well, now all of a sudden there was the gold rush. They found gold and all of a sudden cities and towns started popping up all over the west and commerce thrived. And as that happened, there was a red ocean. But here's the thing. You can think of it like a red ocean or a blue ocean, but in later years, we've started to look at it a slightly different way. And what is that? Well, it is certainly helpful to know <clears throat> that your product is being purchased. That's a good idea, right? Or something similar to what it is that you're selling in your business. This is a big deal because if you have an idea that people are buying t-shirts, I don't know, I just made that up, then of course you could say, well, I should sell t-shirts too. Now, is the market for t-shirts a red ocean. Yeah, it's definitely bloody waters, right? This ocean is already filled with competitors. So what do you have to do? You have to find ways to stand out. 
You have to find ways to uh, stand amongst the crowd and be recognized. I, as many of you know, I was a former professional ballroom dancer, and there was a certain element that you had to fit in, meaning you had to be in the red ocean. You had to be where everybody was. So you wore costumes that were just close enough. You got on the floor, and if you were out by yourself in a corner and everybody else was on the other side of the floor, at times this could be bad. This could not be, or this could be a, a bad scenario for your marks and how well you did in that competition. What we used to always tell our competitive dancers is simple, right? If you want to be noticed in a stationary dance, a dance that didn't really move around the floor, then you better be around where everybody else is. Now, that's great. So I used to say, hey, if you want to actually get noticed, you don't walk into Rome standing out like a sore thumb because they shoot you first and ask why you're there later. So what you do is you walk into Rome looking like the Romans, and then you find subtle ways. You find clever ways to stand out amongst the Romans, but you already fit in. And this is a huge, huge portion of what we're talking about. You have to start to fit in in order to stand out. Right? So you, you start with the fitting in part, but then you stand out. Now, this is a big deal. right? Now, in a product or service, it might be that you already know the product or service is something that is needed. It's something that people want. It's something that people are willing and capable or able to purchase. That's a great start because now you're not necessarily pioneering the process. <clears throat> there are lots of times when there were pioneers and maybe you're in a situation or a state in which you can actually be the pioneer in your thing, right? The Wright brothers were the first, well, amongst the first to start the process of getting people to fly in airplanes. They were pioneers. They had so many uh, challenges along the way. In fact, if you read their story and you read some of the others that were in that race as well, those pioneers had so much to go through to make it feasible for a new airline to pop up now. I just heard of a new one that, that popped up the other day. It's a, a budget airline similar to Southwest and Allegiant, right? And where'd it come from? I don't know. But those pioneers led the way so that it could pop up and fill a need and stand out in a very particular way. And this is a big deal, right? So what can you do? And that's where we want to go to is what can you do? Well, you have to be creative. You have to be creative about your business. And if you're in business, if you have run or started any businesses or been part of any sort of upswing of business, you know you have to have creativeness. And that really is just a matter of actually getting in and trying to be resourceful. A lot of times business owners get stuck in a trap of feeling like they don't have any resources. And that's understandable, except for it's not true, right? It's all about, as Tony Robbins says, it's all about being resourceful, right? We might not have a resource available to us, but if we're resourceful, we can actually find different ways, different solutions, different means by which to execute. And creativeness is a big, big part of that. Now, I tell you that so that I could tell you this story right? This story is pretty cool. I was going, uh, and this happened over the course of maybe two or three weeks. I visited my local gas station near the corner by our house, and I stopped in to grab a drink. So I went in, grabbed a drink, and I noticed this end cap, right? And that's just where they they show the new products that, that they want you to buy, right? And I noticed this in, end cap, and I was like, oh, wow, that's bold. And I just ignored it and kept going, got my drink. A few days later, I walked back in, noticed the end cap again. Wow, that really stands out to me. And I'll tell you what, it was a, it was pretty bold. And I, I just thought, gosh, it must, that's crazy. Like, who would name their product that? 
Now I'm going to, I'm going to flash this product on the screen. So if you're not watching us on YouTube, go subscribe to our YouTube channel because you'll be able to see this video and, and you'll get the same experience. I'm just going to flash it up on the screen. I'm not going to leave it there very long and we're going to give you an idea of what I saw and then just sort of like, Oh, maybe not. And then I'll tell you my thoughts on it. So here it is. Okay. So you can see it right there. And how cool is that? Okay. Well, I'm going to take it off there. So what did you see? You saw this thing, and I'll describe it for my listeners, right? You saw this picture, and on the top it said liquid death. Liquid death? Wait, a second, what are they selling? So I look down, and you look at the cans, and what do the cans look like? Well, they kind of look like a beer can, but they kind of have this element of like, oh, maybe they're an energy drink, one of those a bangs or maybe a uh you know one of those uh n2o or whatever all i don't know all those energy drinks there's a ton of them right uh rock stars they kind of have that that look to it right so it, it's just this very uh standout can very standout uh labeling and it's called liquid death now let's go back First time I saw it, liquid death. Oh, my first thought was, must be an energy drink or it's not alcohol. It would be hidden in the back with the alcohol, right? So it can't be that. And well, what else could it be? So my assumption was that it was like a rock star or a bang or something like that. And I just moved right along. Now, the next time I saw it, I thought, man, that, that's some pretty bold advertising. Then the next time, this was uh, again, over maybe two or three weeks. Next time I walked in and somebody had run into that end cap and had knocked over all those cans. There were They were strewn all over the floor. The poor kid working there was just, you know, in, in hating his life because he had to pick up all these cans, get this all this end cap all set up again. So I was feeling in a nice mood. So I bent over and started picking up some of the cans. As I picked them up, I noticed something very peculiar. I'm going to show you this again. So we'll bring this up onto the screen and let's see if I can make it a little bit bigger. Okay, there we go. So this is what we have here. Okay, I'm going to just make this, see if I can make this a little bit bigger here. Okay, now for those of you watching, you'll be able to see this, right? You might be able to see right here, I'm using my mouse to show you. It's the white can says liquid death, mountain water. Okay, and then you look at it a little closer and you're like, wait a second. The bottom says, don't be scared. It's just water, right? Their intention was to kind of shock you a little bit. On the bottom, the next one down, it says armed with agave and electrolytes. I don't know what agave is. And really, who really knows what electrolytes are? Okay, but we like to pretend, okay? Down on the bottom, it says mountain water from the Alps. Oh, mountain water. Are you kidding me? So when it's all said and done, liquid death is water. This is canned water. Are you kidding me? It's canned water. Okay, you want to talk about a red ocean. What the heck are they? They're selling water in cans. They are taking something that has, is completely and utterly a red ocean. Every, uh, I mean, everybody sells water, right? You've got every one of the major soda uh, manufacturers, they sell bottled water. Everybody's selling bottled water of some sort. You've got the fancy bottled water, Fiji. You got all sorts of things like that. You've got the ones with electrolytes. You got the ones with this kind of stuff in it. You got this kind of water and that kind of water. I mean, you have all sorts of water bottling companies. And these guys lead with calling their thing liquid death. I think it's hilarious, right? Because what a standout thing, right? They're going after a very particular market. Who would recognize that and go, oh, I'm going to try liquid death. You look at it and it's like such a gimmick. You look at this concept of calling your water liquid death and then, they, then they're just being snarky about it. Oh, don't worry. Don't, don't be afraid. It's just water. Right. But it's really good water. Why? Because it's from the Alps, because, of course, water from the Alps must be better. Right. I don't know. Seems like it still has to be 
cleaned and processed and blah, blah, blah. I don't know, but I'm not going to go do the research on it. But I do know that it's very, very clever. Wow. Okay, so you have this completely red ocean. You have a really great gimmick. They probably came across the ability to bottle this water. Okay, I say bottle. But they found a new way to do it. They decided, hey, nobody else is selling water in cans. Hmm. Well, let's pull out the benefits of selling water in a can. So they did. And if you look at the labeling, you can go find it, I'm sure, in stores. You look at the labeling, they talk about the fact that it's water that is actually put into cans instead of bottles, right? Instead of the plastic. And I'm sure they're going to point out how plastic bottled water is bad for you and all the th chemicals and things that plastic would do that you wouldn't get from the can. I'm sure they'll point out how it tastes better because it's coming from a can, not from bottles, right? I'm sure they're going to go and do all of those things in that process. But how creative is that? I love it. I love the idea. I love the mentality. I love the resourcefulness because they had a product. They had something that everybody needed and they could have just done what everybody else did because that's normal, right? They could have just said, well, everybody bottles their water, so we should bottle it too and we'll try to stand out and we'll try to compete in this red ocean. But what they did was they found this red ocean. They know people are willing to buy water. And they said, how can we stand out in that crowd? What kind of things can we do to actually make us stand above? Now, what I haven't done is I haven't looked to see how much that is. Is it more expensive? Is it less expensive? Well, once they create the branding, the branding is the branding. So is the can more expensive, less expensive? I don't know. I don't know. I'll have to look at that next. But the point of the matter is, is they're making a run at it and they're starting to catch uh, some popularity and uh, and people are starting to drink it all over. I see it. I've seen it more and more now that I've uh, recognized it. And this is super important because how can you apply it to your business, to your thing? Well, here's what I'd like to suggest. And this is a cool, cool process. So if you're listening to this and you're thinking, yeah, I need to do that. You know, I have a product that people buy, but I am now competing against a bunch of people selling similar things. Great. You need to spend some time either by yourself or with your trusted team. <clears throat> and you need to spend what I call Disney time. Disney had a process that they went through. You can look it up if you'd like and get the whole story behind it. I'll give you the quick summarized overview. It's a gross generalization of an overview. But generally speaking, he would get his creatives in a room. And he would basically threaten them and say, anybody in this room that doesn't stay in creative mode and starts wondering or asking how we're going to do this or talking about the reasonable or logical way to do this, we're kicking you out. And so he would spend time in his creative room with his creative people, and they would come up with everything and anything that was ridiculous and see if it would fit. Then they would move it to the next process, or now they would bring in some critics, right? And then they'd move it to the next process and go, how are we going to execute that? Once it made it through a couple phases. But the worst thing you can do when you're trying to be creative, and you guys are all guilty, I know because I can raise my hand and say I am guilty as well. But it is super important that you actually set aside time to be creative, and not allow the other stuff in. Now, what are ways you can do that? Simple. Get everybody together in a room. And now if you have somebody that's just not, if they can't get out of the house or that's not feasible or we can't do that or you're not allowed to do it, whatever, you got to get those people out of the room. Don't let them play, right? But when you're going to do this, set aside an hour, maybe two, maybe even five. Maybe you set aside a half a day. Maybe you change locations from where you're normally at. And when you do, make sure there are things to play with. Some golf balls or tennis balls or puzzles or different things that can keep the mind active. Things like carabiners and things that you can click and play with and mess around with as you guys are talking and figuring out different new creative ideas. 
This is super important. A ping pong table, a foosball table, a shuffleboard table, things you can stand up and move around on, a pool table, right? Things that you can engage with each other while you're doing something else and be creative using your mind, your body, your soul, all of the above. And when you do these things, you can start to bring out some ideas that all of you together can say, yeah, that's crazy. That's just crazy enough. Now you think that seems silly. You know, I got a business to run. Yeah. But do you want to take it to that next level? Are you ready to try something that can actually set you apart from your competitors that are selling similar things? This is super important. Now, I want to just end with this. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the guy in the room, right? That they're all sitting around saying, well, we just came upon this water uh, reservoir and we, we know we can sell water. Other people sell water. I'm sure Coca-Cola is making billions of dollars in water sales all over the world. So we know it's possible to sell water. We know people will buy water. But if we get into that, we're going to take such a small portion of the market. So we've got to do something different. And can you imagine the, the guy that rose his, raised his hand and said to the group, I know we can call it liquid death and it will be funny. Now, everybody probably looked at that guy and went, you, you, that's ridiculous. That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. We're not calling our water liquid death. That's not happening. And yet here we are with a product that's being successful and moving forward. Right? So be resourceful. Right? Be resourceful. Go and set yourself up to be creative. Do your Disney process. That's a fun one. You can look it up. You can find it all over Google. It's it's everywhere. Okay, and there is even some really cool frameworks you can manage. Okay, we might have even done a podcast on it. So go and do that. Your business needs it. If you're not in a red ocean, ask yourself. Maybe you should be. Are you ready to be the pioneer with the arrows in the back? As you go and try to train the market, I've done that. I've trained a market before, and it is challenging. It takes years, so you better be able to stay in the game for years if you're going to train a market, right? But if you're in a red ocean, now, if you already know you fit in water, then try to find some way to stand out, liquid death, right? So anyway, if liquid death is listening out there, way to go, guys. I'd love to hear your story. We'd love to have you as a guest, right? Maybe we'll try to find the, the owners and bring them on as a guest. That would be fun. So guys, go look at your business and say, how can we set ourselves apart? Let's do some Disney creative processes and let's figure out how we can create an offering that will actually have a standout in a really positive way. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you enjoyed the episode. I love it. I love, love, love. I'll show you a quick little glimpse of that again. Once again, here you go. Don't be scared. It's just water. All right. Until next time, keep working hard on your business. Keep growing. Keep scaling. And if you guys need some help, feel free to reach out. We're here to help. Let us know. We'll talk to you guys soon. Take care. Every business needs choreography. Choreography in your marketing, your operations, and your sales. That's why we created the Business Choreography Group. Come and join an amazing group of business owners developing their choreography to help their businesses grow and scale. Go to bizchoreo.com group to join us today.